All right. Before we begin the public hearing, I want to, sh to share a few logistics on Zoom features and how this meeting will be run. In order to minimize background noise, please take a moment to make sure you are muted. We ask that everyone remain muted during the hearing to reduce background noise. There will be an opportunity to provide oral testimony, at which point we will unmute those who wish to speak, or you can unmute yourself one by one. If you've joined online, please enter your name, affiliation, and email in the chat box located in the chat bar of the Zoom control panel on your computer or at the top right of your mobile device by clicking, clicking the chat bubble icon. If you would like to testify, type testify after your name and use the raise hand function of Zoom shown here. If you're having trouble finding the chat box on your computer, try clicking on the triangle to the left of the word chat to expand the bar. If you've joined by phone, we will unmute callers one at a time after the presentation to ask for this information and to provide an opportunity for your testimony. Do not use the chat function to provide written testimony on the proposed regulation. The hearing will now begin. The hearing is now open. This is public. This is a public hearing for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Department of Environmental Protection. My name is Joanne Morin, and I am the hearing officer on this matter. With me on the hearing panel is Michael Woodman. We are here tonight on Thursday, March 9th, 2023 at 6 p.m. on an online public teleconference to accept te testimony concerning the proposed regulation 310 CMR 7.02, section 14, cumulative impact analysis. At this time, MassDEP will not be responding to any questions or comments regarding the regulation. If anyone wants to provide comments on this proposed regulation prior to the end of the public co comment period on April 7th, 2023, and needs interpreter services, MassDEP provides language services to limited English, Eng, I'm sorry, English proficient individuals free of charge. Information about this in, these interpreter translation services is available on the MassDEP website. MassDEP has proposed, proposed amendments to Regulation 310 CMR 7.00 Air Pollution Control to require a cumulative impact analysis or CIA for comprehensive plan applications for facilities located in or near environmental justice populations. The proposed CIA requirements are contained in a new section, 310 CMR 7.02 section 14, and include enhanced public outreach to and involvement of environmental justice populations assessment of existing community conditions and analysis of cumulative impacts. Written testimony will be accepted until 5 p.m. on April 7, 2023. This is the date and time by which any written comments must be received by MassDEP. It is not a postmark date. Please submit written testimony electronically to massdep.impact at mass.gov, or if you wish to submit written testimony on paper, please email it, mail it, please mail it to Joanne Morin, M-O-R-I-N, Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, 100 Cambridge Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02114. Comments sent to any other address may not be received in time to be included in the official docket. In a moment, we will begin to unmute computer participants who have indicated they wish to provide oral testimony. Once all computer participants who have indicated they wish to testify have done so, we will call on the phone participants who wish to testify to identify themselves and ask them to present their oral testimony. To ensure all those who wish to testify are able, we will ask participants to limit oral testimony to five minutes. Please speak clearly and distinctly. I will now open testimony.
Yeah, and Joanne, we have um, one person who um, went into the chat, um, Pat. Pat, would you like to unmute and put on your camera and identify your affiliation, please? Yes, I would. Um, I don't, has the uh, video come up? Yes, we can see okay. you and we great. can hear you. Great, great. Um, I, will, I am Pat Gazimba. I am co-chair of Salem Alliance for the Environment in Salem. And we are very concerned about uh, cumulative, cumulative impacts um, and the state doing a very serious job of doing community, community cumulative impact analyses for each of the projects that it uh, that come before us. Um, for example, um, I, I have been following what I consider to be in Massachusetts, the trifecta of environmental injustice. And that is that I have been looking for years now at and um, actively uh, trying to do something about the uh, siting of the compressor station in Weymouth, the siting of the uh, peaker plant in Peabody, and the ongoing problem right now with the siting of the East Boston substation. In each of these, uh, in each of these situations, I do not feel that DEP really did uh, a serious deep dive in looking at what the cumulative impacts are. Uh, in the case of the Peabody Peaker plant, which is a city, uh, which is in Peabody, a city contiguous with Salem, we're aware that that Peaker plant, uh, were it proposed now, would undergo much more rigorous scrutiny uh, with the new uh, environmental laws that were passed last year. So what I want to encourage you to do is to think about when you're um, looking at cumulative impacts to please look at issues, qualitative issues like poverty levels, housing insecurity, chronic disease patterns, et cetera, in the neighborhoods uh, in which these facilities are being cited. We uh, think you should also be looking at um, vulnerable the vulnerable populations there and particularly citing some of these projects near um, senior centers, senior housing, uh, schools, et cetera. So I am in favor of your really looking more, much more carefully at the qualitative impacts on the neighborhoods in the, in the areas where these, um, in particular fossil fuel uh, cited uh, plants or operations are going to be uh, placed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah, next is um, pa Paulina. Would you like to? Okay, great. Um, can, we, can we see you? Okay, great. Now we can yeah, see great. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Paulina Casasola, and I am the Climate Justice Organizer at Clean Water Action, and I'm also a member of the Massachusetts Environmental Justice Table. And I'm very grateful for all the work DEP has done to ensure an equitable implementation of the 2021 roadmap bill, um, roadmap law, and want to thank you for the opportunity to provide feedback on the cumulative impact analysis regulation today. There are many communities in Massachusetts that have been overburdened for too long and are dealing with the financial, social, and health impacts of air pollution. So when evaluating um, new proposed development projects, please consider the health of residents of environmental justice neighborhoods. For instance, places like Roxbury, Chinatown, Springfield, and East Boston should be out of the question. Um, they cannot handle any more pollution sources. And in fact, we should start conversations about we can, how we can restore the quality of, of life of residents of these communities. And I understand that economic development is a priority in Massachusetts, but people of color and low income people do not need any more pollution sources near their backyards. 
Um, and while we need to prevent the placement of new polluting facilities, it is also critical that we phase out of harmful greenhouse gases and transit pollution because uh, Massachusetts has some of the highest asthma rates in the country. And with the way that COVID has impacted our communities, um, it has been really tough for overburdened EJ neighborhoods to be able to sustain a, a good quality of life. Um, so the cumulative impact analysis requirement should encompass all of these issues and include a strict analysis of alternatives to polluting activities and an analysis of ways project proponents can improve the quality of life of residents. Um, we hope that DEP's final rule it also includes qualitative information like poverty levels, health insecurity, chronic disease pattern, and additionally, that you look closely at things such as flooding and heat islands that are just going to continue to get worse with the effects of climate change. Uh, maybe tree canopy and green infrastructure are things that could help us alleviate some of these issues, but in the meantime, we do need to consider all of this holistically when evaluating new um, potential permits and projects. Um, also, as um, a resident of the Mystic River watershed, I want to highlight that this area had some really extreme hot temperatures last summer and very low tree canopy. On top of that, we are dealing with heavy transportation coming from the highways um, and um, high levels of air pollution and ultrafine particulate matter. So I hope that um, regulations like the cumulative impact analysis protect communities across the Mystic River watershed and beyond to ensure that these neighborhoods are uh, protected and residents have a say on what is happening in their neighborhood. Thank you for taking a close look at this multi-layered issue through an equity lens and for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, next up, Carmen. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Carmen Martinez. I'm a resident of Lynn, an environmental justice community. First of all, thank you for your willingness to listen about our input on cumulative effects. In Essex County, we're overburned by pollution. Of the state's five remaining incinerators, three are located in Essex County. I'm deeply concerned about the sewage outfall on the border of Lynn and Swampscott, which dumps raw sewage into the ocean where I spend a lot of time. However, my main concern is the presence of wind waste sagas since it's the oldest incinerator in the country and has experienced numerous fires, breakdowns, spills, and malfunctions. I'm a year round surfer and from most of the surfing spots around me, I can see the incinerator stack from the water belching out smoke and covering our communities in a cloud of toxic chemicals. But the scariest part of all of this is their online and uncovered toxic ash dump. It's unbelievable to me that there is a proposal to expand, expand this ash dump for another 20 to 25 years given that the Saugus facility is located in an area of critical environmental concern. It's increasingly impacted by sea level rise and storm surges due to climate change. It is located in a flood zone and the surrounding communities have already flooded on many occasions. What will happen to the unlined and uncovered ash dump when a severe storm hits it and further empties its contents all over our communities? All in college placed air monitors and revere, and there's two years of data showing that ash is blowing into our communities from the unlined ash dump. The ash dump doesn't have a modern lining system like every other land landfill in the state. 
Wind Waste claims this ash dump has a layer of naturally occurring clay underneath, but this doesn't prevent leachate from seeping into the marshes and soil. Arsenic, lead, mercury, and cadmium are four of the many toxic elements that are found in this ash. These draft, these draft rules that the DEP is considering should do a better job of protecting environmental justice communities. The strengthening of existing regulations to protect our communities should, should stop this expansion. Please ensure that the state keeps their promises to permanently close and cap this dangerous ash dump. And please hold this company to a much higher standard with regard to their underperforming incinerator, the oldest one in the country. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I'm not seeing any any anyone in the chat or any hand ra hands raised at this time. We're going to continue to wait for a few minutes to see if anyone else has comments. Did anyone join by phone? Oh, and here we have some more comments from Vic Monka. Vic, do you want to unmute yourself and turn on your you're, uh, okay, great. Go ahead, Vic. Yeah, Vic Mohenka. Um, thank you. And sorry I came late. No um, to that. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to comment on the proposed rulemaking and the work that went into creating regulations that include the requirements from this section of the Next Gen Roadmap Bill. I'm Vic uh, Mohenka again. <laughs> Uh, the Acting Deputy Director with the Sierra Club Massachusetts Chapter on behalf of our 100,000 members and supporters across the Commonwealth. We're here in coalition with environmental and climate justice groups across the state. We have strong priorities of ending environmental injustices while conserving our environment and minimizing harm to nature. We support the addition of cumulative impact analyses into the permitting process within DEP, but would like to see stronger regulations created to protect Commonwealth residents, especially those in environmental justice communities. These regulations need to state that permits will not be approved for projects that cause or further um, inequitable environmental or health burdens. Specifically, there have to be qualitative metrics related to the cumulative impact analysis that will lead to the denial of an air permit. Basing the regulation on permissible levels of pollution or harm is not a sensible or effective way to protect residents or environmental resources. DEP should move to an approach centered in hazard analysis, requiring the prevention of harm rather than the implicit encouragement of harm. Lastly, communities need longer comment periods to have real engagement with new rules and how they will affect them. Uh, this statutory language was passed in reaction to specific harms allowed by DEP. And we want to know that the voices in those communities have been heard in the design of these regulations. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Just checking the chat just to see if we've missed someone that indicated in the chat. I'm not seeing anyone. Is there anyone else that has indicated they wish to speak? And Mike, I don't think we noticed anyone joining by phone. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So we are still going to wait a few minutes just in case. Um, and we will at least wait till 6.30 in case someone comes uh, late or if someone changes their minds and wishes to testify. Okay. 
and we'll be bringing that up every few minutes. If you do leave early, and I guess uh, Vic had said he came late, please remember that the comment period goes to April 7th at 5 p.m. And comments must be received by them. Uh, that's not a postmark date. That's uh, comments either have to be submitted to the, uh, um, the um, email uh, submittal, which um, I just want to make sure I get it right. So it's the mass, massdep.impact at mass.gov or mailed uh, to myself, Joanne Morin at uh, Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, 100 Cambridge Street in Boston, 02114. Uh, by, so we must receive comments by five o'clock on April 7th at the end of the comment period. Uh, your written comments to include them. But of course, oral testimony is accepted as well, but if you wish to submit written comments as well. Uh, do we have one comment? Could you put the address in the chat? Yes, I can do that, that would be fine. Okay. Or how is spell this out? And by email is the is the Okay, that looks correct. <laughs> so again, we're just waiting till 6.30 in case anyone arrives late or if anyone changes their mind and wishes to provide oral testimony.
again, we're just going to wait uh, two more minutes until 6.30 uh, for any uh, late arrivals, as well as in case anyone else wants to submit oral testimony. Has everyone presented oral testimony who wishes to do so? Okay, I wanna thank all of you who testified this evening, as well as those of you who have attended this remote hearing without testifying. All the testimony from this hearing will be considered before MassDEP finalizes the proposed regulation. After the public comment period closes at 5 p.m. on April 7th, 2023, we will review and take under advisement the comments raised during this public comment period prior to issuing the final regulation amendments. When the final regulation is issued, it will be posted on MassDEP's website. We will notify all parties who, are, who have participated in the public hearing process when the posting is completed. There being no further testimony, I hereby close this remote hearing at 6.30 on um april on april 9th on april 9th 2023 uh, um yes joanne um march 9th oh thank you very much yeah that sounded wrong i said uh april so many times so again there no there being no further testimony i hereby close this remote hearing on march 9th at 6 31 p.m Thank you all for attending and, and have a nice rest of your evening.